In previous episodes, we crossed the Caucasus Highway of the Silk Road, which passed through Georgia and connected the northern and southern civilizations. Now we will travel to the city of Martvili in western Georgia, Kolkis to the homeland of mythical Medea and Assetis, to witness ourselves how Georgia came into existence and how it emerged from the sea. The Martvili Museum preserves many important artifacts, some of which date back several centuries, while some date back several millennia. However, this time we will visit the exhibits that lived on Earth millions of years ago and now found shelter in the exhibition halls of the Martvili Museum. They tell us very interesting stories about the past and the future of our planet. How did our Georgia start and where did it come from? Where did it originate from? It will not be enough to say it started in ancient times because it did not happen as described in the Bible. Our country, our Georgia, came out of the water not tens but hundreds of millions of years ago. Here's a huge giant mollusk that is a hundred million years old. At that time, this place was completely covered by the sea, and not only this place, but in fact the whole of present-day Georgia and the Caucasus. That is why we start from Samagrolo, because it can be seen clearly in Samagrolo. I can tell it is a miracle that once we can see, follow the contemporary processes, here above, I mean above ground, it is a subtropical and tropical zone, resorts, and so on. People live and work. However, in just a few kilometers, we see this. We see caves where no one has set foot for millions and tens of millions of years. They are untouched and preserved, just as they were under the water tens of millions of years ago. Then it flooded with water, as it is in history, in the legend, and in the Bible. Animals had already settled here, because in this area the lower jaw of a rhinoceros was found. It means that the landscape was already inhabited by hippopotamuses, or behemoths as we call them today, giraffes, and so on. This is the story of the birth of our Georgia, and our homeland from the water. This path leads to Toba Cave. It rained for three days in a row. The roads were washed away and the cars are in trouble, but the drivers did their best and succeeded. Mollusks, whales, and sharks told us amazing news. We also learned that in Samagrello, it is possible to time travel millions of years before our era. Just a few kilometers from Martvili, near the village of Balda, we can see an environment like this. Of course, we would go for it and immediately get in the cars. At the outskirts of Toba Cave, we set up base camp in the backyard of our new friend Gia Bartia's ranch and started preparing to climb the cave. In order to visit the cave, wishing is not enough. You will also need special equipment, experience in rock climbing, and most importantly, do not even think about entering the cave without professional guides. It is associated with great danger, but those who would take the plunge will never regret it. They will ride horses on the way, enjoy the beautiful nature, the mossy forest of amazing beauty, fresh rivers and springs. They will see the highest waterfall in Georgia, 240 meter Toba, and two kilometers from it, the White Bride, Onior waterfall falling from 70 meters height to the Azuri Lake. The soil is wet. The ground is wet. We are getting stuck. We are sliding. 
but we are ascending the steep slope and climb the rock at an angle of almost 90 degrees to the side of the waterfall on the ropes fixed by our guides. The river flows into the cave, and as soon as it leaves the cave, it falls from the rock, forms a 240-meter waterfall, and joins the Abasha River after a few kilometers. Base, I am going to the entrance of the cave now. You will see me in a minute. It took us over two hours before we reached the cave. This cave was discovered in 1963. Young scientist Arsen Okorjanishvili died during the expedition, and the cave is named after him today. Today, caves are studied by researchers. In the age of mythical thinking, the cave was considered as the way to the earth and the birthplace of the gods. Only the chosen were destined to go in and out of the cave, and it meant rebirth. In ancient times, people believed that dragons lived in the caves, and indeed, all the way, they would accompany us and help us move our equipment, these tiny, cute dragons. In the tunnel, we would have to walk mainly in the water up to the knees or the waist, but there are a few lakes that you cannot go around, and the only way to cross them is to swim, which is a problem for us right now. We are not afraid of the cold water, but it is important that the cameras and lights do not get wet so that we are able to show even a little bit of this completely stunning beauty to our viewers. Luckily, the guides warned us about this obstacle earlier, so we brought a tiny inflatable mattress painted with funny dragons and our equipment swam safely into the tunnel. We created a modern myth on the dragons protecting the operators. There are caves in the world where poisonous gases are released, and you can only enter with a gas mask on. On the contrary, in Toba Cave, there is pleasant air, and it is not difficult to breathe at all. Look at Irakli. Doesn't he resemble a magician with his stick? When he taps it, I think that he taps this staff, the hocus pocus will start. There are branches at every step of the way. Some are so narrow that you can only pass on all fours, but it is definitely worth the effort. When a water drop falls from a great height, it falls into the clay and forms a shape like these tulips. It resembles a vase. It is beautiful and also very rare. Valerie and Gigo are experienced speleologists. They have explored a lot of caves, and in addition to helping us, they tell us many interesting stories about caves. Look here, such wiggly forms are very rare in caves, and see, they are translucent. I'll get lighting. What mineral is this? Calcium CO3, it consists of limestone. In the cradle of transparent calcite lies a clear pond, which is dripped in from above by stalactite. Stalagmites growing from the base are so transparent that the light goes through them easily despite their thickness. They are shining like torches and make an amazing show. The right branch of the main tunnel, which we call the White Temple, is amazingly impressive. Everything is white, and it looks like a magic palace. There is no river here, and only mystical sounds of drops are heard in the silence. Of course, 
The main attraction of the cave is the cone-shaped calcite pipes of different sizes, stalactites and stalagmites. Stalactite hangs from the ceiling with the tip down, while stalagmite grows from the bottom up. The stalactite has got a thin capillary in the middle, and if you look closely for a while, you will see at the tip of the cone appears a tear-like drop of saturated calcite, which gradually enlarges, then breaks and falls on the stalagmite growing from below, forming layers of calcite. This tear is repeated continuously with a precision to the nearest thousandth of a second. The stalactite and the stalagmite move drop by drop towards each other and, if nothing interferes, they eventually merge, transforming into stalagnates, columns uniting the ceiling and the floor. Along with the unearthly beauty, the aspiration of stalactites and stalagmites towards each other also makes us think that both minerals and living organisms are part of the same universe and thus obey one common pattern. We have not been to the top, so we do not know what is happening there. Okrojanishvili had been there. The length of this already explored branches of this tiered and multi-branched cave is more than a kilometer and a half. However, the research has not been completed yet, and many new branches are to be discovered. Each cave has its own beauty and stylishness, but this one is especially fascinated in... With this silence, yes. This is a shell. There are so many types of shells in this cave. We found a shell. It appears to be a relative of the museum exhibits. They lived together on the ocean floor millions of years ago and are still not far from each other. We are now on the ocean floor. Those ones are serving science in an exhibition showcase in Martvili and this one is over here, just 15 kilometers from them, immersed in minerals. It's a beauty. Look, it's poured like chocolate. You are the first one to take these shots. I had some pictures from here. Look here. What are these? These grooves. It's called hearts. So-called cave pearls grow here. Some people believe they are real pearls. It shines. Yeah, here they are. When they are rounded and made into beads, they look like pearls. Some people really think it's a pearl. Stalactites and stalagmites join each other. Wow, what is this? Miraculous! We came across strange stalactites. Of course, strange to us, speleologists obviously know about them. They differ in shape from ordinary stalactites, and it turns out such stalactites are called shark teeth. However, they are more like elephant ears. With brown plates stacked side by side, nature seems to have created a cave organ. When touched, each of them makes a different sound. When musicians see this, I am sure they will try to perform a cave symphony. 
with these musical stalactites and the accompaniment of a river. Daylight appeared. We are coming out of the cave from the depths of the earth. We came out of this miraculous cave, and I have to tell you that you really have a sense of rebirth as a person. Behind you, there is a world of mystery and serenity, which strangely attracts you and pulls you towards it. And in front of you, there is the land of the sun with its innumerable colors. Nothing could have made us stop here. Nothing could have prevented us from seeing Oniori Waterfall. We are going to the unusual cave of Oniori from where this waterfall flows down. Why is it unusual? We will see on the spot. Now behind me, there is Oniori Waterfall, which we are going to climb up. I think it's the most beautiful waterfall in Georgia and certainly one of the most beautiful waterfalls in the world. Just a kilometer walk from Toba Waterfall, you will reach the beautiful Oniori Waterfall, which falls from a height of 70 meters. We went to the Oniori Cave, and now we will see what makes it strange and interesting. As we have been told, Oniori Waterfall emerges from the cave, and inside that cave, at a distance of about 100 meters, there is another waterfall, about 20 to 25 meters high. The water here is much warmer than in the Toba Cave, and we do not need any special clothing to swim in the river. We are now in the heart of Samagrelo, the underground, in the Oniori Cave, and this waterfall comes down from the very heart of the earth. Whoever sees this magnificent sight will understand why Samagrelo has been a place of myths since ancient times, why it inspired the vivid imagination. Probably, Amirani was chained in such a cave. This is an absolutely marvelous sight in Markvili District. From prehistoric times in caves, we return to modernity through Martvili Canyon. Every time people visit Martvili, they should visit Martvili Canyon. Enjoying this beauty is never enough. 
The Marchvilly Canyon was cut into the rocks by the Abasha River through millions of years of tireless labor. Limestone bridges are preserved in two places. This indicates that there was once a karst cave here, which then collapsed. It is very easy to get here. Immerse yourself in this magical world and cut off completely from the daily vanity. This canyon is only 150 meters long, no more. It is small in size, but there are beautiful places. Here is my guide and he tells me that 2,000 people were coming to see this every day. 2,000, right? There were days when 2,000. How did you manage these 2,000 people? How did you take care of them? It was possible to bring in these 2,000 people in turns from morning to evening. And the fact that we have peace now is to COVID's merit? Yes, this is how it turns out. However, I think that there is no danger here. All measures have been taken, and I think that it is a crime for a citizen of Georgia not to visit this place. Once again, it is very easy to come here, and it is a place of dazzling beauty. In Samagrello, canyons, waterfalls, and caves can be found at every footstep. Almost every village has its own waterfall. As a rule, we often listen to mythology or read it, but here in Samagrello, you constantly have the feeling that you have stepped into mythology and become a part of that mythology, if you can say so. This is our Georgia. This place is called Dadiani Swimming Pool. However, it is also associated with the names of David Agmashenabeli and Georgi Chkondideli. Why not? There is nothing unbelievable in this. Anyone visiting Martvili, especially the king, who had heard about this beauty of nature, would certainly want to see it. Today, it is generally easier to visit this place. You can drive from Martvili and get here in 10 minutes to see the beauty that David Ogmashanabeli enjoyed. It seems that Georgia is small, but at every step, the nature and character of the people change. The environment also changes completely. We see a different landscape everywhere. One lifetime is not enough. Even two and three lifetimes would not be enough to fully explore and get to know this country. But at least we should do our best to get to know it better. We continue to observe the nature of Samagrello. Sulfur hot springs coming out of the earth is usually associated with Tbilisi. However, just a couple of kilometers from Nokalakevi, there is boiling water so hot you cannot touch it. Here in this place, the water is very hot. It is so hot that it could not be hotter and not only because of the sultry sun, here, this pure, crystal clear river is so hot that I do not know exactly how many degrees, but eggs can definitely be boiled here, even the pheasant and also a buffalo if needed. This water has healing properties. It has long been used to treat skin diseases, rheumatism, and joint pains. A stream of hot sulfur springs joins the Tejuda River and forms a beautiful travertine waterfall on the way. This gorge itself is of incredible beauty. This place is called Dedamuka. Dedamuka means a pregnant woman in Magrelian. According to the legend, the pregnant woman was pursued by the enemy and she prayed to God for help. According to one version, a woman drowned herself in the water. She jumped into the water and then, there you can see a stone pillar and they say this stone looks like a woman. According to the second version, God heard her prayer, 
narrowed this gorge, and the woman crossed to the other side and escaped. This is the history of this place. The history of Earth teaches us that, according to geological periods, our planet is constantly changing. Where the sea once was, land appears. The bottom of a lake eventually becomes a desert, and the tropics are replaced by eternal glaciers. Only the life forms that adapted to these changes can survive. The nature of Samagrello, of course, is interesting for its unique beauty, but what makes it especially unique is that you can hardly find a place anywhere in the world where distinct climate zones and landscapes of different geological periods coexisted in such a small area. About 10 million years ago, there were tropics, subtropics, and swamps all over the Eurasian continent. This unique landscape of that period is preserved in the present-day Samagrello Seaside. This is Polyostomi Lake, and it is surrounding swampy areas. These places began to form about 10 million years ago, and therefore there are unique plants that flourished back then. Only 70 kilometers from this place, there is a totally different environment, Tobovarchikili's Lake and Glaciers. Anyone interested in what the Earth looked like 10 million years ago can easily find the answer in Kolkheti National Park. Here you will find plants that are typical only for taiga and tundra swamps. At the same time, Kolkheti Park is a vital space for birds. It is home to about 200 species of birds and it is also a resting place for migrant birds from north to south and south to north. Without this rest, they would die on the way. In addition, hundreds of thousands of birds remain here for the winter. Part of the national park is Lake Paliastomi, which was a sea inlet several thousand years ago. Over time, the sea built up sand into a narrow strait, and the inlet turned into a lake. There is a legend that Paliastomi was named after the tribe of Pavlia, which lived here. They worked on Sunday and therefore were punished and covered with water. In fact, it is a Greek word meaning ancient shore. It is unique for its fish, birds, unique environment, and it needs to be taken care of. We started the tour of Samagrello from the caves and we'll finish our journey in the mountains. We will go from the depths of the earth to heaven, where there is a ladder in the sky. There is a sultriness near the sea, but it takes just 60 or 70 kilometers to get around the external glaciers and Tobolkvarkhili, or Silver Lakes. The trail goes up and down. The terrain is rocky, and in some places, rock is crumbling and the road is very slippery. 
This beautiful flower, which shows up at 3,000 meters above sea level, is called Movaria by the Magrelians. Movaria means refusal in Magrelian. That is, this flower refuses shepherds, tells them that I have come out and it is time for you to leave the mountains. And the shepherds are leaving because it is already mid-September and it already feels that winter is approaching the Samagrela Mountains. As usual in the mountains, the weather changes rapidly. We are not in the hot sun and suddenly we found ourselves in such fog that we cannot see anything. The sun came out again shortly and the fog disappeared without a trace. However, after a while, the fog came up from below again, made its way to the end of the gorge and completely covered us so we could no longer find our way. It took us a while to struggle uphill and the night fell when we were on the upper pass. Lighting our way with lanterns, we reached the lake. In the morning, when we came out of the tents, we saw unbelievable beauty. The sunrise and the rocks reflected in the water of Lake Tobolkvarkhili. We have now climbed to Tobovarkhili Lake in the mountains of Samagrelo, more precisely to the lakes. There are several lakes here, more than five. This one behind us is Lake Okhaje. It's called Okhaje, which means Lake of the Annunciation. It has another name too, Tsiskibuli Lake. It is Tsiskibuli in Magrelian, the sky ladder which starts from here. And really, if you look at this emerald lake embedded in the massive rock, it really reminds you of a sky ladder, the holiness of this place. This pure water was highly esteemed by the ancients. There was such a reservation that people, the shepherds who came up here, avoided even dipping their hands into this water so as not to disturb the holiness of this lake. This lake was highly honored. This lake itself is at 2,500 meters. As I mentioned, it is 33 meters deep in the middle, and one of the tributaries of the river Khobitskali flows from this lake. We finished shooting at Okhaje Lake and climbed up again, crossing the rocky ridge. On the other side, there is the second and, as they say, the largest lake in the Tobovarchkili Lakes. Just across Lake Okhoja, 3,000 meters above sea level, we cross the path and approach the lake Chitaquara, which means red rock. It is even more astonishing that only 70 kilometers from these rocks, from this alpine zone and glaciers, there is a sea and a beach. The nature of Samagrelo is unique this way. This is Samagrelo and this is our Georgia.